Thank you. All right, to continue this program, uh, it's really going to be interesting because I don't have the bios for all these guys, but our first speaker uh, is a first cousin to the King of England. Um, so far, we're doing okay, Dan. Yeah. Uh, is Dan Kugler, and he's with the Cooperative State Research Education Extension Service in Washington, D.C., and I apologize that I can't give you all of his background, but I can assure you he can. So would you help welcome Dan Kugler, please? Good afternoon. The audience has thinned out a little bit. Self-introductions. Um, I'm still kind of new to this business. You're looking at a suburban kid a former physicist who turned into an economist, and those may not look very appropriate for this kind of an audience, but in the long run, you learn lots and lots of things about lots and lots of areas, and it's, this is a very fascinating and inter interesting area of agriculture. And uh, if you looked at my background, you would see one of the reasons that I ended up in agriculture is having spent two years working as a Peace Corps volunteer in northwestern Afghanistan, teaching magnetism and calculus and various kinds of things that were not terribly appropriate when people were starving and needed water and shelter and clothing. So I switched out of physics and on into resource management and on into economics. There's the introduction. I work for the Cooperative State Research Education and Extension Service in Washington, D.C. I've been in D.C. for quite some time. And one of the things that I'm going to do is we, we're a very kind of different agency. You've heard from several before who are large agencies with many thousands of people. We are primarily a, a federal assistance agency. We have a budget of about $1.2 billion, which is similar to that of the Agricultural Research Service. But our entire agency consists of 300, roughly 360 people in Washington, D.C. We do have a field staff of one and a half people, that is, one and a half people, one in Texas and one in Missis half of one in Mississippi. So we do our business from the Washington office in D.C. We're a little bit different also in that we're not a line agency with a small number of staff and a fairly decent budget. We are the land grant partner to the nation. Our research laboratories, our extension people, our academic programs work all relies on the land grant system across the country. Whether you're in, a, in, a, in an 1862 school, a land grant, an original land grant school, whether you're in the historically black land grant schools, which we call 1890s, or you're in the 1994 schools, which are the Native American schools, there's 108 colleges and universities that really form the staff and partnership that our agency works with. Within the natural resources area, I'm the deputy administrator for the agency. And I have to say, I guess the, the prominent programs that sort of agree with everything that has come forward is we're very concerned and working, beginning to work much more earnestly in the area of global change. We have a major programs in water quality and water quantity and on most recently moving into the area of water reuse. And probably the one that I think is the fastest growing in uh, area that we're working in that's related to the global change is we have a very substantial program also in air quality. And it turns out that agricultural operations are a, a major uh, issue in the area of air quality and air quality management. We work under a strategic plan which uh, aligns itself with the Department of Agriculture. You can see the strategic goal six up there. And under strategic goal six, as an agency, we have been beginning to build a program area in uh, rangeland and grassland ecosystems. And you can see a number of focus areas that we're beginning, that, we're, that we are doing work in. And many of them are the same things that were, were spoken about in the first session, uh, fragmentation, recreation, wildlife risk, sustainability. Uh, the one that I would, and, and we've seen the, uh, uh, some discussion about the formal and informal education. That the formal and informal education is a mission area of our agency. We work with the academic programs of the universities across the country 
We support the extension service in every state and virtually every county in the country. There are four things I'm going to talk about briefly. There's probably more words up there on those four things than you really, that you, than you really need to read. Barriers to successful natural resource management is one. Building a portfolio in this area of rangeland and grassland uh, is, is another one. Uh, forestalling the brain drain uh, in natural resources would be the third. And the fourth is understanding the effects of management practices at appropriate scales. We're going to talk a little bit about SEEP about that one. Under the first one, and this will hit kind of some of the some points that were made earlier also, um, we've been working at trying to create what we would consider to be a theme in CSREES that would encompass all of the natural resources area, all the environmental work that, we've, that we do, and some way that we can attach all these individual programs. You can be a water specialist, you can be an air specialist, you can be an environment, you can be in forestry, you can be in range, you can be in all these things, but what is it really, what is the real core of activity that we can stick all these programs to and really act in a unified way? And what we've, what we've done is two things. One is we've taken not just the administrative unit that I work with, but we've gone across the entire agency and built what we call environment and natural resources in small, italicized, bold letters and encompassing the, the activities of the entire agency. And within that, we have developed a theme which is called working lands and ecosystems. Again, this is very reflective of some of the discussion that's gone on before. Well, what is this all about? Well, it's all about a blank slide. Let's try this again. Oh, there it is. Primarily, and you heard um, uh, Gail talk about this at the, at, the, at the question, the very last question that was asked. We're trying to say that what needs to be worked out is you need a whole variety of disciplines working together if you're actually going to engage in problem, the kind of problems that we have and we're work dealing with across the country right now. And not only that, but we need to be thinking about really the human dimensions and the human behavior act aspects of the kinds of problem solving that we're doing. We cannot do this just with a bench scientist. We've got to be thinking about people in the forefront, the way people behave, why they behave in certain ways, and to bring all the socioeconomic and the cultural aspects to play in any kinds of solutions that we're working, for, we're working on. What's new about this concept? Well, there, there, yes. there isn't anything particularly new. This is the story here. Oh, there it is. Um, there isn't anything particularly new about this, but it's become more of a reality, I think, to all of us as we've been working in our areas. The need to work with people in other disciplines, the need to work on the human dimensions, the need to work with people, the need to understand what social implications are, the need to understand the cultures and the context within which solutions are being created. We'll move to the second item, building a portfolio. I'm just going to read this. We, within ENR, we are building a program of rangeland and grassland ecosystems from scratch and with a flat budget. This is an area that's extremely difficult in the federal agency under the, the budgeting regimes that are available right now. We have, for the past two years, been trying to build up our portfolio of competitive programs, of formula programs, and also earmarked programs, and working directly with the extension range specialists that are, that are all across the country, those working under hatch programs doing research, to try to build a program in rangeland and grassland within CSREES in partnership with the university system that makes sense and does the right kind of stuff. It's not easy trying to do this within a federal bureaucracy without the impetus of some new funding line. A third thing that we're working on, forestalling the brain drain. We know and have been working with, in particular, SRM for several years, saying we are connected directly to the academic programs at the university system that, do, that are the principals and training your staff, your staffs, whether you're government, private, or nonprofit in this area. We also are the folks that are working on training the extension agents of the future that work in this area of rangeland and grassland. 
we have ways and programs within our agencies to foster these kinds of educational, formal, and informal programs and are working to pursue those. One in particular is the National Needs Fellowship Program where there are ways we can direct resources to very specific science areas that are needed in the future where there's some demonstration of need. The example we have working right now is a very specific agreement with the Forest Service to pursue the identified needs of the future forester, or forest resource person, and we're going to go into a decade-long cooperation with the Forest Service to build that out through the university training programs at the land-grant colleges across the country. Another untapped resource we have here, and I have now the privilege of being also the deputy administrator for uh, Families 4-H and Nutrition for this year. There is a vast array of natural resource curricula in the 4-H area, and I think I'm going to have a lot of fun writing memos to myself from the natural resource area to the 4-H area to see if we can't build this relationship up in the 4-H and bring natural resources up in a very different way. You know, I have a brother in the Navy who schooled me on how the nuclear Navy got started with Admiral Rickover writing letters to himself. I think I can do this. It's going to be a lot of fun this year. Just watch this one. And the fourth area we're going to talk about, and it was mentioned earlier, Rex Rowe mentioned this earlier about SEEP. Uh, this program has been around for a few years. It's cooperative between uh, uh, NRCS and ARS and CSRES is in the business uh, through our water quality program and our relationships with NRCS in particular we have taken uh, upon ourselves in fiscal 08 we're going to do two or three uh, grazing land watersheds in the west this is an area that we know if you look at this map of the states you can see that oval in the southwest over there it's an area where we do not have a seep watershed, any, any seep watershed activity, and it's a, tr it's a traditional area where there's lots of rangeland activity. You can also find the kind of databases that are needed to do the kind of seep project that, that uh, do the kind of project that seep is all about. So we will be putting out an RFA probably in the next, I don't know, two, two months or three months, whenever this whole thing with appropriations gets settled out with uh, uh, we'll be coming forward with an RFA to look at these, these rangeland uh, 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 seat projects. And these would be in complement to some of the existing uh, seat projects are dealing with uh, uh, grasslands right now. So, very simply, four different topics. These are all four areas that the, the professional associations, uh, whether you're in grassland or in rangeland, that we as an agency in partnership with the university system need help with. We think that this whole area of human dimensions, socioeconomics, and natural resources needs to be pasted together in a much better way than it has been in the future. It needs to be real, not just invite me as an economist in in the 36th month of a 36-month long study and ask what happened. That's not the way this business needs to happen. It needs to be right up front. We need your help in building out this program for uh, it, within CSREES and rangeland and grassland. Uh, uh, Jim Dobrovolsky is our national program leader uh, in that area and is doing a marvelous work and bringing, he should be bringing forward a strategic plan, strategic directions for the agency in the next month or two. Uh, we'll put that out on the street and you'll all be able to see that. Um, one of the other areas that we all need your help with is you've talked about where are you going to get your staff from, how do you keep the professional credentials up, how do you get trained people for the future that is the business of this agency working with the land grant system across the country. We need your help and your ideas on what to do in those areas. And lastly, watch for these SEEP projects that are going to come out in uh, uh, the watershed projects under SEEP. They're going to be, they will be excellent. They will take several years to come forward and will, will be a fine addition to the existing SEEP program. And last of all, as always, I want to say thank you to everybody. And I had something special in here. What was I going to say? A special thank Well, obviously a special thank you to the Society for Range Management and also to the American Forage and Grassland Council for holding a joint session for all of the activity that's gone on in the past nine years to plan the joint congress in, uh, in Mongolia and uh, for just having the time to speak with you today. Thank you.